Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to modify one of these quite cheap Chinese style emergency stop buttons so it has two normally closed channels on it. You see on this uh, particular eBay advert it, uh, it only mentions normally closed. Actually how these things ship is they have one normally closed channel and one normally open channel. Um, and to do this all you're going to need is a flathead screwdriver like that although I'm also going to use a multimeter just to show you what's going on and to prove to you that it actually has a normally closed and normally open channel on it usually now this is going to be mainly a practical video but I just thought I'd go through a couple of cases first where you might want to actually have two normally closed channels on your emergency stop I mean, to be quite honest, I don't know why you would need a normally open. But anyway, first example, you may want to send a digital signal to your Arduino to tell it to stop the program and, for instance, to brake the motors, as in stop the motors moving um, with force, as well as braking a 240 volts or, if you're American, whatever your mains voltage is in America, you may want to brake mains voltage at the same time as sending a digital signal is what I'm saying or for instance you may use actually two separate ring mains on your CNC machine uh, my friend Savas at the moment is uh, is running his extractor unit on one ring main because the extractor has this large induction motor that's causing a lot of ripples in the mains current and on the other ring main he's got his spindle router you would also maybe use two ring mains if you're going to be drawing more than 16 amps with your, your whole kind of machine setup. Um, this is the simplest diagram. Um, you see this is the emergency stop here. It's two normally closed push switches. This is the electrical signal for a push switch. Now I'm lying. Now that's more or less the electronic symbol for a push switch. This is kind of the plunger here on your push switch um, and this dotted line shows there's a connection, a, a me mechanical connection between those two switches within the emergency stop. So you've just got your ring main one there, this would be your live wire of the ring main and then going to the extractor from the other terminal of the emergency stop and there's your ring main two live wire going to one screw terminal and from the other screw terminal of that channel it would for instance go to your router spindle, spindle router, whatever. This diagram is uh, for instance if you wanted a digital signal to stop your CNC router program running on for instance in Arduino this could be any other electronics package that you can configure with digital inputs. Um, there's your mains voltage AC live wire coming to one terminal of your emergency stop I missed the uh, switch plunger off again and to the other screw terminal of that channel you're going to probably going through your spindle relay and to the the router and then on the other one you'd have digital 5 volts this would probably be supplied maybe from your Arduino you may also, um, for instance, want to interrupt the USB power coming to your Arduino. You would have to split apart your USB cable for this, but if you really need to make sure there's no power coming into your uh, control box at all, that's what you'd need to do. You could take your 5 volt line from your USB cable and run that through one channel of the emergency stop as well. But this example is a digital input, so you'd have your plus 5 volts digital uh, TTL voltage going through one channel of the emergency stop and to your digital input. But for completeness I've just included a pull down resistor and what that would do is actually stop the pin floating when that 5 volts is, uh, is interrupted. So it would tie that pin down to ground 
rather than have the the pin floating between uh, on well that is between high and low states but I think that's far far too much talking I'm going to show you the e-stop so for this mod you will need two of these style e-stops um, but for the current price on eBay, £2.89, I think you can probably stretch to it. Um, the reason you would need two is because, as I said, they ship with a normally closed and a normally open terminal normally. And what I'm going to show you is how to take both of these apart, put the two normally closed ones together and attach them back onto the same emergency stop. Now, just for the hell of it, I'm going to uh, just prove to you that these have normally closed and normally open channels on them. Um, this is kind of to show you how, if you're new to electronics, this is how you check the continuity on a normal multimeter. Some of them have what my friend calls a continuous noise feature, which is actually just to connect, uh, detect uh, electrical continuity. Uh, but you can also use the resistance setting uh, that is the setting that measures resistance uh, to detect continuity as well. I've just set that to 20k it'll probably work on, on any of these other resistance settings. You see the ohm symbol there tells you what that section does. But you see the screen is, is reading 1 now that means actually that there's no connection it's almost like an infinity symbol it's infinite resistance because these probes aren't touching at all if these had a resistor between them it would show the resistor value if I touch them together you see you have zero resistance so you can imagine how that could be used to detect electrical continuity if I put them on the normally closed terminals of the emergency stop you see there's no resistance, that means there's a connection running through the body of that switch. So if I press it like I wanted to turn the machine off, see it goes to infinite resistance, there's no connection. But if I turn it around to the green side, I don't know why it's green to be quite honest, but it seems to be a standard on these. Now you see there's no resistance there, that means it's closed. If I reset the emergency stop see there's no connection so that is your normally open side so now to take these things apart take your flathead screwdriver incidentally bigclive.com on YouTube has done a full teardown of this piece but all I'm going to show you this is a good video by the way but all I'm going to show you now is how to quickly take it to pieces so you just put your flathead underneath those tabs on each side just gently pull it apart the most fiddly thing about this are these plastic kind of spacer things here which if you're not careful will just fly out so I'm just going to lie going to rest that one there carefully while I do the next one just put the flat head under those two little tabs and the, the same on the other side yeah really easy okay that one's there uh, you see what I mean there's the plastic tab came off just gonna fit that carefully back on just clips into place on these tiny little raised bumps there so as I showed you before I'm just going to put those to one side now as I showed you before the red side of these is the normally closed so those are the ones you want to keep these just slide apart on those specially shaped channels there so don't really need the green ones for now but the red ones just go back together exactly the same way. Just 
kind of difficult doing this looking through a video camera but normally it's really easy there you go there you have your two normally closed channels and carefully just fit that bit together again without disturbing those plastic thingies and there you have it two channel normally closed emergency stop I'm just going to take you through how that switch that I ended up with corresponds to this diagram um, it pretty much is a one-to-one -one there so each of these little sections that you just took apart and reassembles that's one channel um, as you probably guessed from when I had the multimeter earlier on so that's one of your screw terminals there that's your other screw terminal there so obviously each channel is totally electrically isolated from the other the only connection is mechanical via that switch on top Now, as usual, I, I hope you found that video informative and useful, and if so, please subscribe because there's going to be a lot more about CNC router stuff on this channel in the next uh, few weeks. But I just thought I'd give you a, a little preview of what my next video is going to be about. This is my 3 kilowatt spindle, uh, which I bought from China, which comes with its own inverter. It's incredibly heavy. You can see the scale of my hand. This, the diameter of the, the, the cylinder here is 10 centimeters and it weighs a ton. Um, and at the moment, I'm building a special carriage for this based on the C-beam stuff, which is, is already on my channel. Please do subscribe because there's a lot of stuff about building your own C-beam systems on my channel um, you can see there's obviously this is very rough the next video is, is a proper explanation and, and uh, walkthrough of building this special spindle carriage for this immensely large spindle over there so thanks for watching it's goodbye from me it's goodbye from my spindle <laughs>